the brief that uh, Irish has prepared for from last lesson, yeah, which was quite uh, well attained, uh, she very clearly stated that uh, the idea of the finger pedal is to avoid using the uh, foot pedal to, for example, link notes, yeah, which is something that we should at first try to do uh, using other resources, yeah, like finger substitutions or different fingering, yeah, or or well, or other 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 techniques that affect the hands, yeah, not not other parts of our body. So that was that was quite correct, yeah. So we will continue on the same line today, yeah. So I will just open the. Uh, just give me one second, yeah. So I will just make sure this phone doesn't ring, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's open the score, which is here. So, who would like to go first? Wait, Juan, are we playing the Nocturne of Chopin? Yes. Ah, okay. Chopin's Noct Chopin Nocturne, which is... Just let me down yeah. it again, because you know, I can't find it anywhere. So, uh, ah, no, no, yes, I know where it is. I know where it is. It's here. It's here. Okay, so let's focus on you and I will have the score on a different screen. Very good. Fantastic. So, who is first? Venga, with the left hand. Uh, every, every, the first phrase, let's say. Yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah, only the first phrase, let's say. Okay. Uh, Anna, let's uh, see. Both hands? Uh, both hands, yes. Oh. Uh. And no pedal, right? Uh, in principle, we are trying to not use the pedal if it's not strictly necessary. Okay, okay. No pedal, no pedal, no pedal. For the technique, no pedal. Can you see if I'm from there? Yes, very good actually. I'm seeing very good internet connection actually, Iris. Yes, what you said worked perfectly. I'm super happy now. <laughs> Finally. Well done. Yeah. Good. Highlight your your bubble, yeah, your video. Let me see if I can. Uh, speaker view, that's it. So, and I want yours. Wow. Just uh, let me see. Uh, 
That's it. Okay, so, Iris, I would like you to do something. To take the first two bars, yeah, because you did the report, so you are the most prepared. So, can you... I want to see your pedagogical articulation, okay? Because you played it well, yeah? So, can you explain to me in an understandable stream of information, yeah, everything that's going on in that in those two bars technically. Okay. So, so on with the left hand, yes. Left hand would start with a far movement. Let me, help you, let me help you more. Let me help you more. Sorry? Let me help you more. I I would like you to explain first the left, as you said, then mm -hmm. the right, yeah. But then I would like you to also explain how you put both together. So what okay. this one is doing when this one is doing something else and vice versa. Yeah? So okay. left hand, right hand, and how they integrate with each other. Okay, I'll try to do my best. Okay. So left hand starts with a forearm movement because we need this not to sound important. So we would put our foot forearm movement. Then we would enter with our movement on the T because we don't want it to sound um, much loud or anything. We will for link it, we will use the thumb, the first finger, to get the arm movement ready for the chord. Yes. And for linking this with the D octave, we will um, change from finger number five to finger number three on the same note. And again, arm movement. A small arm movement. And we repeat the process. Okay. Now, with the right hand, we will start as well with our movement for the same reason. We need this note to sound longer than others. And it's the first one, it's our first beat. So we'll start with our core movement. And from there, all finger movement to our next peak, which is on the next B. Sorry. Correct. And then for our movement, as we have some rest and repeated notes. And finger movement to finish. Okay? Okay, okay. Do it again, the right hand, one more time. Yes. You did well. most difficult part to explain how they work together yeah and how okay. you align okay so take your time let's see so okay I'll say what I what I think about how to mm -hmm. put them together um, in general just in general lines the lessons will be much softer so we can get the right one to deliver um so we can hear good the melody, which is the most important thing here. Um, so as we said, we have the two important notes, first notes on both of the hands, the D and the G. Right? From here, the left hand will be much, much softer. So and the right hand will have a metal piano. That's good. Now, very well done that. Now. Technically speaking, I will I will give you a, a template. Yeah, in terms of you, everything you said, you have to say it, and everything you said was correct. Okay, so now I will add something else. So. Now here we have the first interaction. Yeah, the the finger movement is is not a compound movement. Yeah, it's a simple movement. That means that we don't need to prepare what happens afterwards, yeah? But the left hand is a compound movement, okay? So let me just highlight my, my, that's it. There we go. So we go, right? And then that means that we will have to do this kind of movement, yeah, first. So then we are ready with both at the same time. Yeah. 
So, what I mean is that this one needs to do something, yeah, before, yeah, so. Okay. Yes. So, let me just, that's it. Okay, try again. Okay. So, as you were saying, the first interaction will be with both hands on the core movement. And that's true. When I am playing the quavers with the... Um, oh, sorry. Before playing the quavers what? with the right what? hand, the left hand will get ready the, the arm movements. Right? And when we get there, we can play both hands at the same. On the next notes of the right hand, we'll have to do the same. I'll have to prepare the arm movement on the left. But I play these three notes, and then I can fall with both of the same. Okay. As I have pressed on the right hand, I have time to deliver the next arm movement of the left. Exactly. There is, there is a topic yeah, that we need to clarify, which is the topic of juxtaposition. Yeah? And that one is easy to explain. So, if you're doing finger movement on here, for example, and a compound movement here, it's evident, yeah, that this one will have to catch up, yeah, to be as be as ready as this one, which is already prepared, yeah. So this kind of thing, obviously, you know it, because yeah, but the student doesn't, yeah. So that creates anxiety and that creates the tension in the student that tension that we say oh you are very tensed yeah but it's not enough to tell the student you are very tensed yeah we are making the student tense because we we are asking the student to do a couple of things yeah and we are not explaining the student how to do it in a manageable way yeah so this is is what i want to work on today yeah to make sure that this doesn't happen yeah so again iris just advocate or commit to the to the first bar yeah first bar and the introduction yeah. okay go again okay. one more time so we get it we get okay it. so then we have oops please. we have four movement and four movement then left hand gets ready for the arm movement again gets ready well done well done, well done. Now, when you say get ready, you're right. Yeah, it gets ready. Yeah. So, first of all, I catch up with the finger movement. Yeah. And then, finger movement goes first. Yeah, obviously. La si, la si, do, la si. And then you need to tell the student precisely, precisely where to lift here with the other finger. Let me just spotlight myself. That's it. So I will do it again. One option, if the student is, uh, I mean, obviously someone who is playing the nocturne in G minor will not be a beginner. But let's say it's a student who needs a bit more help because maybe it's someone coming from a different technique or something like that. Yeah. So then you have. I would tell the student when you start the ornaments, when you start to play La or A. As you prefer, yeah, is when you start preparing. So, look. And then the left will go tiny, a, a fraction of a second before. The right, as someone does. And then when I play La on the right, I will be already preparing the left yeah so then yeah then the left has free way into the following chord because there is no juxtaposition but we know that the right hand will have to play using a different technique because there's a rest there isn't it so the rest we will apply it here when we play the octave of re re so at this stage i am at the moment yeah so i will be lifting yeah, and you see, and when I play the B flat, I will be preparing. 
I would be preparing both because both have to, to do something. Left hand have to do, has to do, sorry, has to do our movement and the right hand is to repeat a note. So both of them are in the same situation. Yeah, so. Yeah. And then when I play La, I prepare. And then the left tiny bit first. And then on the same gesture, I prepare and I play the next one. Yeah? It's evident that you will have to dosify the explanation. Yeah? It wouldn't be wise to say all this like in a in a in, in a in a report to the students. Yeah? But what I wanted to do with this exercise I asked you to go through is to see if you were seeing these things. Because you need to anticipate the problem that your student will be will encounter. You don't know I need you to as teachers we need to extrapolate ourselves from our own perspective. Yeah? Of course, if I am teaching you, my very advanced piano student, I'm not going to be telling you all this. Yeah? Right? But at the same time, you're teaching some, someone else. Yeah? And for you, being a professional student, yeah, it's very useful as well. To, to, to review these mechanics. Yeah? It, per, it perfects your technique. Yeah? Because you become extremely um, atten attentive to the details, yeah? which definitely cleans up your performance. Yeah? Okay. What were your impressions, Iris, of m the, the comparison of the explanation? How, what is, what you think? I mean, I think it's essential for the, like, to deliver, like, final, to have a good final result. Uh, this is super important. So, and as you said, especially for the students to really understand, because maybe for, right now for me, it's a little bit more, um, without thinking, I can do the arm movement while I do the forearm movement and I don't have to, to think when do I do that, but for the student, it's, it's essential, it's not. Um, if not, the transference doesn't happen. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, happen. Yeah. It's, uh, we need to fight against this uh, ambiguity that somehow taints the, the piano teaching. Yeah? So, okay, I will put you, yeah, I will put you in the field, yeah? So I will see how you can do it, yeah? And you will work on the first bar with Anna, okay? So I will spotlight you both, yeah? Let's see if I can. Uh, gallery view. So I think I can. I don't know how to do it, but I will try. I made it, very good. <laughs> so, uh, Anna, that's it. So, basically, I will I will tell you how this situation, how this lesson will evolve. Iris will teach Anna, and Anna will teach Georgios. Then I will teach Georgios the following bar, as I did with Iris, and we will start the the the, the circle again. Yeah, backwards. Okay? So, we have a lot to do. So we start. Let's see. First one. Yeah? Ana Crucis. Yeah, sorry. Upbeat. Sorry. Syncopation. <laughs> Syncopation. And, uh, and first one. Let's see. Okay, so should I explain first again? So, okay. before you do it, how are you going to do it? You go left. <laughs> You go right, you go both together. Okay. When you go left, you talk about as well the dynamics of left. You are creating the left hand. So you need to be, okay. you can't leave it, it's your opportunity, yeah, to, to make it perfect because the student is only playing the left, yeah. 
Then when you go on the right, the same. You perfect the right to a different level, yeah, as when you play together. Because when you play together, you have to give things for granted, yeah, that you have to count okay. having said things, yeah. So then you, when you work together, you're not actually coloring that much the right and the left, yeah. You're just making sure they fit together, technically, yeah. Then okay. the last step, which is step number four, would be to color up the product, yeah, that we didn't do yet, yeah. So, one, okay. two, three. Okay, so left and first, that would be as you just said. We would start with a forearm movement, a medium size forearm movement, because we need a good G, so it sounds. Sorry. After this, we go with arm movement and we play with a small arm movement to the octave tip. Then we link the finger number one, and this chord will be. A little bit louder, so a bigger arm movement. We link the fifth with the third and small arm movement to get a soft octal D. Again, same process, and the chord will be again louder than the, than the octaves. We link the fifth with the third and small arm movement, so we get a soft D again. And the last one would be with the same process. Bigger arm movement, but less bigger than the two previous arm movements that we did for the chords. And we link the fifth with the third and smaller arm movement. Okay, then right hand will start the same, so four movement on the right hand. Then finger movement, and this place, uh, these notes are much softer than the first one, right? Until our next pick, which is after the this little triple, right? So we have that accent on the B, and then our a forearm movement because we have the rest and repeated note, right? can do all that, no? So, let's review the left, let's review the right, let's see how you we correct things. So, first of all, the left. Yeah, I, yeah, let's see. Okay, well, you mean... Ah, oh, sorry, Anna, right? To play for... Yeah, 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 I mean, you gave oh, her the instructions. So, let's see uh, how... Uh, yes, yes, sorry, I didn't understand. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. something I read. I don't finish seeing the arm movement, like I don't see the deliver of the weight. Yes. So make sure you yes. let your weight go. Let me see. Yes. So again. Dynamics. How do you see dynamics? Um maybe on the this it could be a little bit more soft, so soft. with a smaller arm Why? Why? There's a reason. Why? Well, um, because of the accents. Yes, exactly. Because it's, it's, it's on the weak part, it's a weak beat within the bar. Mm. Yeah, so it's a passing. Mm. It's a passing. I mean, we are all saying that the left hand in general has to be soft. Yeah, but within that softness, yeah, D, the octave is even softer. And on top of that, Chopin is helping us. Why? Chopin is what? Sorry. Chopin is helping us with the writing. Why? What's the difference between D and E flat in the left, in terms of the of the density? Well, we just have two notes. On D and D, exactly. and three notes in the chord. D is an empty, it's an empty octave, yeah? So he's not making it difficult. He's, he's saying, look, D doesn't have to sound that much. So I placed an, I, he wrote an octave, yeah? He didn't wrote a, for example, he didn't wrote a full D, F, A, D, yeah? Yeah? No, he did Yeah, so by itself, yeah, the harmony already, yeah, the fillers are helping this feeling of, 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 
and I don't want to see more. I don't want to say more strength because it's not that it's powerful. This, but it's just a bit fuller. Yeah. Mm. So yes. I leave you too. Let's see how you get around that, Iris and Anna. What do you do uh, with the last chord with A, C, E, What fingers will you use? Because I heard you said change the five for the three, but is this the same on all the chords or? It's the same process, yes, that you use with the previous ones. So when you are on the D and D, let me get closer. When you are on the D and D, you do the same. You lean with the finger number one, you prepare the arm movement. And the five to the three, it's here. Five to three. I will very well now. I will add something else that might help. When when he does, when she does uh, this one, right? And she does the substitution. Yeah, you can see my my picture that we just replaced. You can see me there, down there, right? When she does the substitution, Anna, yeah, when you do the substitution, you do the substitution, yeah, and in the same action, you prepare the arm. Yeah? So you are, you see? Okay, so the co it's, a, it's a complex movement, but it needs to be very efficient. So. You see, all together, yeah, all together, okay, and then, yeah, the, the finger is supporting yeah, the movement already, the finger three, the substituted finger, okay, mm, you see, because that, what I was told is true, it will be the same thing always, yeah, so then, then you will pivot on this D, yeah, so you will pivot there, and then the same thing, yeah, let's see if I can give you a bird view of it. Mm -hmm. So you're always using the same fingers for each chord? Exactly. Okay. So again. Yeah, and then, yes, yeah, so now you can see me much better, yeah? Yeah, the, you see the gesture, how it works? Yeah, so, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, uno, dos. Yeah? Yes, and it's also, yes. It's very, it's very cushiony, yeah, because obviously we want maximum contact, yeah, the maximum contact with the key so we don't produce a lot of sound, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, again, Iris and Anna. Okay, I'm going to try. Yes, what I feel is a bit this, look. It's too sharp. It should be like... You see my sound? Not this, Sorry. not this. And also I can see it. Apart from listening to it, I can see it, yeah? 
are, mm -hmm. are very switchy. Yeah, switchy means like when you press the the switch of a light in the wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah? and that mm -hmm. that mechanism creates sound. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's sharp. Yeah, mm -hmm. and what we need is something very puffy. Yeah, so nothing to do with that. More like a no. Yeah, that mm -hmm. you can control through. So I... Can I add a three? Yes. Just a little um, tip I use. Uh, so, research. What was it? So, when you do the this, so it doesn't sound that, that um, like more loud than it should, make sure you are super close to the key and then you just release the weight that you have. So you are already here, touching the keys, and then you just let your weight fall very gently, but letting it fall. I see. something else too which is a theme of continue the release of the uh, of the wrist yeah remember Anna when you have already played a note yeah any movement that you do afterwards it's for you yeah it will not create any sound yeah so if you go and if you if you were successful as Iris indicated you to do in delivering the weight at the last instance of contact with the key, yeah, that was a very good instruction, yeah, yeah, after the sound, you still need to release a bit the, the wrist, yeah, and that will not modify the sound, the sound is already produced, yeah, but you still need to do it, not for the piano, for you, yeah, because in here, yeah, as you can see, you are in tension, yeah, look at my, at my, you see my arm? Yes. Yeah, it's in tension, yeah. But when I am there, it's not intention anymore. Yeah? Yeah. So... Yeah, always coming back home, coming back to the same position. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah? You see, I'm going even exaggeratedly down, yeah? And it doesn't produce any more sound, yeah? Yeah, you see? Yeah. Okay, again. Okay. Claro, es el last movement. Yeah, so oh. you need to, yeah, you need to, to, to make sure that you oh. you fully deploy the tension. Yeah, so yeah, the support in the previous note, the support on re, it's very important. Yeah, because the support, the pivoting on Re, on Re or on D, yeah, is what will help you contain, yeah, the trigger here. Yeah, and not fall on it. Yeah, but, yeah, with D there, yeah. You see, soft and nice, and then... One more time. Yes, well done. Obviously, 
obviously the first times you try yeah you might you might fail to play the notes plaqué until you get this subtlety yeah this subtle subtle subtlety yeah this this sensitivity to play soft yeah but plaqué and that fear was what was making you play louder yeah to guarantee the plaqué but you need to learn how to do the plaqué a bit softer yeah and there is no other way but by trying yeah so i am a bit more pleased so play it once again but for iris i want to see if iris can detect any other thing yeah That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. So, your job, Iris, then, yeah, would be to uh, create a nice dynamic design. Yeah, now the technique is more or less there, yeah, but the dynamics are, no, slightly, yeah. So, let me show you how we do it. So, go again, Anna. <laughs> Speech, it will be ta da di da 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 di. Yeah, mm. this, caric this tune, yeah, we we'll do something like blah 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 blah. Yeah, mm. so this is what I mean. So I play? Yes. fast because it's it will be very slow anyway when, when you put together with the right now the left hand is at 75 80 percent yeah so mm -hmm. what does it mean that you received all the information we could give you yeah you adapt it as much as you could within the short time that we're giving you during the lesson yeah i'm talking to you about as if you were a student yeah so, as a teacher, we also need to know when to stop, yeah? Because uh, the student will not do everything that we want in the lesson, yeah? It's just, it's, it's a matter of toleration. You need to tolerate the frustration. It, it will not change 100%. Yeah, it, it, some students will change a bit, some more, and very few, yeah, will be able to, to change 90%, yeah? But that doesn't mean that the, the, the element will not improve. That means that maybe they need to be on their own with our instructions. Yeah? And that also is part of being a good teacher. Yeah? Because if, for example, if you insisted too much, yeah, you create the opposite effect. Yeah? You make the, the, the student feel that, that she or he can't do it, that, that it's horrible, that it, 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 you know what I mean. Some of, remember, at the end of the day, the relationship with the piano is an intimate re relationship that we have with the piano. And the students also have theirs, yeah? So you need to leave some of the progress, yeah, some of the improvement for that space, yeah? When they are on their own, yeah? So then they will round it up or not. If they don't, what do you do? Well, you, re you reassess the following session and you stimulate again the same thing, right? Okay, so for me as a teacher, I would stop there with the left hand. Okay, so let's see the right hand. It is mm -hmm. <laughs> Well 
done, well done. Now, the answer. Yeah, so all that, all that re dies into. Yeah, so. Until A. And in A, obviously, we catch up very quickly. So between A, B, C, and B, so between A and the last B, or between La and C, which is the same, yeah, we have a huge ratio. Yeah, a huge ratio. Very piano, yeah, and quite prominent. Yeah, so. Yeah, so. But remember that the C bemol, I will say do and re, right? Because otherwise I, it's too confusing. So between re and C bemol, between the re syncopation and the ornated C bemol, yeah, there is a relationship of linked, linked by two, which means like if you were doing ta. Across the elements, across the elements. So, re, C. Yeah. So, C is prominent in relation to its surroundings, yeah, but is the resolution of the resyncopation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it can be more. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so let me see let me see that one more time and keep the tempo un, dos, tres so. re do, si, la, li, do, si Sorry. Okay, it's it's good. It's good. It's good. Okay. Now, let me see it one more time. Sorry, so I see a technique. No. Well, instead of all this movement, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would make the fingers reflect, yeah, a bit more, yeah, the dynamics of the of this phrase. So the first one obviously is for a movement not terribly far away, but a bit far away because it's a it's a long note, yeah, it's a syncopated note. So yeah, then the other two quavers will be played from the surface, yeah. Yeah, and progressively, la si do si will be further and further away from the surface of the keys because we need to produce a b a si bemol, yeah, which is slightly sharp. Yeah, so you see, mm -hmm. there is distance to the key. Ah, you can't see anything. No, now you can see. That's the key. Yeah, and the finger is up. So. Yeah. And the la is from the surface. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So let's see. That's it. That's it. Anna has a, an underlying technique. Yeah, the underlying technique probably is more Russian. Yeah, and she involves yeah, a bit everything yeah the, so we will not work on that today yeah but uh, and it's fine it's not, there is nothing wrong about it yeah uh, so but remember for the ones that we are following the scaramuza technique and for the ones seeing the video yeah that in scaramuza technique yeah we try to be as neat as possible in relation with the uh, what we call the the supper, the non necessary movements yeah so we only focus on those movements that produce sound yeah so yeah okay 
Ana. What would you correct there, Iris? Sorry, can you repeat it? Yes. Well, I guess uh, on the last little scene, I would get the fingers more close to the keys so I can get more soft. And then on the C, last little C, I lift it a little bit more. So to make that difference. Last little C. Yes. So I would do it like this. So close. And when I'm here, I lift. With mm. you just there? Ah, oh, then no. oh. within the movement, no, you would exaggerate more the movement between the D, the C, uh, Do, and uh, and C, which in English is so. Yes, so you can have that. Claro. Let's see, that's nice. Okay, now, very good, Anna, very good. And thank you for being, for being the, the hypothetical student today. Now I will pass on that role to Georgios, yeah? So mm -hmm. I will replace the spotlight. So Anna, now pay attention. Yeah, Ui, sorry, I did that mess. Just one second. Uh, 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 let's see. Okay, I have you both, and I will add myself to the That's it. Very good. So we have Anna, we have, let's see if it's monitoring well, it's fine. We have Anna, we have Georgios, yeah, and mm -hmm. myself. Okay, so Iris is the listener now. So, Anna, yeah, I will see how you detect, yeah, what how how much you can detect and how you intervene yeah in Georgios performance of the first bar of the left hand do i have to explain first to Georgios or he just plays now yeah so i will see you teaching Georgios the left hand of the first bar okay fantastic All right, yeah. Julius. So, yes, we're going to work on the left hand. So the first thing that you need to do is uh, deploy a forearm movement in the first note, in G. Since this is like the bass note of the key, it needs to be very deep and the arm very relaxed. And using the forearm movement to deploy a deep but not too strong sound. We don't want the G to sound too sharp but we want it to sound mellow, but intense. So we would deploy it in this manner. Not too far from the piano, but a little with a little bit of distance between the keys and the hand and the finger. So you can deploy very well and very deep that first note. Okay, the second part is moving your arm and your hand slightly to your right to press that octave, the octave in this. And in order to press those Ds a little bit softer than the first note, because we are in a very in a weak um, B, we're gonna use a little bit of the wrist movement using the forearm movement. So we're gonna use the bounciness and the flexibility that you have in your wrist to lay your hand down and use the natural weight of your hand to deploy that. The trick is here that your movement needs to be relaxed always, because if you do it tension. With tension, you're gonna deploy a very sharp sound, which is what I did before because I was tense. So it was like Juan was saying, it was like a switch. It was very sharp, very tense, and it was not smooth. So we need smooth bounciness and flexibility. So look carefully. This is the first movement I wanna do. Forearm, lift, and down. You see, there's a difference between the first note, how I deploy it, 
how I fall on the first note, and then how I fall on the octave. Uh, falling on the octave is very smooth and very soft, because again, we need to deploy a very softer sound than the first beat, which is a strong beat. So let's just do the, that movement from G to the octave. Let me see how you do it. All right, let's do it again. And in this case, when you're deploying that uh, first note, don't go with your wrist down. That is the second movement. The first movement is just falling from the sky. And then the second movement is when you let your wrist to fall a little bit down. Mm -hmm. Let's do it again. Excellent. You're doing a very good job. Remember not to go way too down, because sometimes uh, this even happens to me, I can do this. Wow. And this is not the aim. The aim is to, again, fall from up with your wrist pointing upwards like a little arrow, and then falling almost to the same level. Exactly, not too low. Not like this. We want this. Okay, it's like a balloon landing. Balloons, they don't land like that on the earth. They go, and they like kind of flat, no? So the same movement. Mm -hmm. So forearm, fall through the sky, balloon, and they fall flat on the earth. Okay, not too. Very good job, fantastic. All right, so now, how do I go from here to here? Okay, in some scores, we might want to add the fourth because it's kind of easy, you see? That's an option you can have, but normally to deploy better the um, aim of this exercise, which is to move around without needing to use the foot pedal, we would change those fingers. We wouldn't go five, one, and then four. We would use the fifth finger on the F sharp of the next chord. So the movement that I'm gonna do after falling from the sky in this octave, I'm gonna lift my wrist again, and then go to play five, three, and two. And when I fall in this chord, I do a similar movement as, as the octave. I use my thumb as a pivot, as you can see carefully, I play my octave, I leave my thumb, and then while my thumb is stuck in this D, I'm going to put you closer in a kind of a bird view so you can see better. There we go. Mm -hmm. So after playing my chord, my octave, I'm going to leave this stuck as if it's stuck with glue. And then I'm going to move up with my wrist up and play with the correct fingers and with the natural weight of my hand of my arm, drop down. And then when I want to go up to my octave, this finger is going to stay stuck with glue. Again, the same situation as in here, but we're in the chords. So in the F sharp, we're going to leave the five stuck and make a quick change while my arm is up in the air. Boop. You see, I'm going to deploy it very slowly. Da, up. New chord. I fall with my natural weight and then up and then quick change while I'm up. And then very slowly, the same thing, falling down from the sky. All right, let's just do this movement. Look carefully. I'm going to do it one last time. Octave, up, chord, up, change, and down. Again, octave, I'm stuck here. Then I go up, I'm stuck here. I make a quick change while I'm up, and then up the... All right, let's do that part very slowly. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, I'm going to leave. I have a lesson. Bye-bye. Bye, Edie. Okay. A ver, otra. Very good, very good. Okay, two things here. Uh, from going to your octa, uh, you did not complete uh, the roundiness <laughs> of the arm, okay? I'm going to put, look, I'm going to put my view sideways. And you're going to see better what I mean by being round and bouncy and this movement. You see, what you did now was, it was good, but from changing to the octave to 
here, you did not fully complete this movement. You went directly. You went to to plane, like in a plane. You went like ba, ba, and you switch in a very horizontal manner. What you need is to make sure you move up in the direction you want to go. Remember from the octave, we're going up. So your wrist needs to be very flexible and help your hand to go up and play that chord like this. One, up, down, up, change, down. Okay, remember, down, up, down again, and then up, change, down. Okay, let's do it again. Mm -hmm. Up, up. Very good. Now, the last, it is very natural and it is very normal to feel very tense because this kind of change, it's, it requires a lot of movement, a lot of changes and weird positions. Okay, so the hand, the first reaction you're going to have is going to be very tense. But in here, in reality, try to relax the shoulder. This is something that I experience that sometimes if I'm tense like this and I want to play all tense and all concentrated, I'm not going to deploy it correctly because my shoulders are very stiff, then my hand, my forearm is very stiff, and then it's going to provoke my hand to be stiff. So I don't want that. I want to relax, leave my shoulders down, relax this part, especially here, because while you're going up and down, you're kind of using your elbow as a hinge, no, for your forearm movement. And if we're tensing here also, we're going to deploy a very tense and a very stiff um, sound. So make sure your arm is relaxed. And before playing and doing this exercise, a very good trick is to just slightly move your elbow to the sides and relax that. And then you can play. Relax it a little bit. And then up, down. Very relaxed. Up, down, up, down. And it's much better. Okay, relax a lot your forearm. Let's do it again. Much better. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, what we want, remember in this octave, we want the octave to sound a little bit lower than my chord and than my first note. Okay, so the trick to make that D and D to sound lower is to move it, but a little bit, not too much, not go too far from the keys. What I did before is just showing you in a very exaggerated manner how we want to deploy the movement. But on this octave, make sure you move slightly and you fall with the natural weight of your arm of your hand and then when you're gonna reach that chord you can move a little bit higher and then and then slightly because the trick here is while you move up the higher you move the stronger is gonna be your fall so if you move up very very lightly your fall is gonna be very light and very soft so we want in your octave to move a little bit, lay it. Then in the chord, move it higher, higher, let it drop with your whole weight. Then high, change, and then slowly move lightly and let it drop softly. Okay, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Very good job, much better. Very, very good. Okay, fantastic. And now, the same is going to happen with the next chord we have, okay? The only thing is that we have different moves. But we're going to find ourselves in the same situation. That's we fine, just did. That's fine. It's good. It's good. It's good. Oh. Let me go to... Very well done, actually, Anna. I'm Thank impressed. you. I am impressed. I believe with all my students. I'm like super explaining and super cute and super <laughs> playful. Very well done. Let me see. I will come back to, so we cannot see each other. Eh? Just one second. Now we cannot see each other. Very good. Okay, so, Georgios, very good student, eh? Oh, Excellent student. <laughs> well done. So, uh, well, I'm very pleased with this. We will continue with the Nocturne in G minor, yeah, until we finish the exposition. We will do it all, yeah? It will be like a module, yeah? Uh, the choice of this Nocturne is mainly because it 
it basically proposes a, a very common yeah, uh, texturization of the left and the right hand. Yeah, this is most of the cases you will have a left hand which is secondarized. Yeah, so it's good to, to know how to explain how that happens. And the, the pace of the piece is particularly comfortable. Yeah, the, there are no a lot of there, there, there is not a lot of skips, there is not a lot of multiplicity of movements. Yeah, so it's about the refinement of a short collection of movements. Yeah? I'm also telling you this so when you choose a piece for a student, take these things into account. Yeah, so if, if the movements that are necessary to play a piece are the same, yeah, throughout, yeah, and it has a texturization which is stable, yeah. It will allow you to, in a manner of, a, of an etude, yeah, in a manner of an exercise, it will allow you to work on deeply yeah, on, on certain subjects. Yeah? So when you make the choices of the pieces, uh, look into these kind of things. Yeah? It's important. Yeah? Then don't, don't, don't just choose the pieces because you like them or because the student likes them. Yeah? It, you should find the challenge is to find a piece that the students like. Yeah? That, that are motivating and also yeah, they comply with these other requirements. Yeah? So well, having said that, yeah, I will finish the stream yeah, and I will tell you something else about